Ooga booga, ooga booga. The ooga booga chant was chanted with a question mark because I'm not sure that this video is gonna go out ooga booga. I think it will. I feel like this is a more conversational place here on ooga booga. Welcome in boogies and also troublemakers. Two very distinct groups of people. There is no overlap. You are one or the other. For those of you that don't know, I found myself in some hot water. I was in the shower, <laughs> and then I got out of my shower, and it turns out there was a conversation happening due to my latest video on Dylan is in Trouble, the Hush movie commentary. Now, I want to start this video by apologizing. I'm sorry that you guys are a bunch of babies. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not serious. <laughs> a lot of the conversation is really respectful. There's so much conversation happening, it's hard to keep up when you're stupid. But Counterclockwise did a good job, I think, of... It's just kind of encapsulating everything. It seems like there was a perfect storm of sorts that happened that blew this entire thing out of proportion. Some people are arguing over whether his dark and sexual jokes are okay or not. Some people are arguing whether his privilege affects his commentary. Some people are arguing over his critical approach to the commentary. Some people are arguing whether he's misogynistic or not. Some people are arguing whether he was tone deaf in the commentary or not. And I'm sure that there's there's more. There's there's a lot of conversation happening. The privilege of Dylan and his hush commentary. The comments made it sound like it was his own fault he didn't like the movie. He expected it to be a run-of-the-mill horror movie, or he's a privileged man who didn't even try to understand the woman's perspective, or he went in wanting to hate it because he was ready to critique more. I think the thing that bothered me most is that Someone suggested an idea, and then so many people were like, oh yeah, that must be it, that it just became fact. The whole, he expected it to be a run-of-the-mill horror movie. Oh, Dylan, it's not a horror movie, it's a thriller. Therefore, you didn't like it because you came in expecting it to be a horror film. If Hush, halfway through the film, turned into a romantic comedy, the killer falls in love with the deaf woman, they get married, have some kids, it's a funny film, from the halfway point onwards, I would have had so much fun. I wouldn't be here like, oh, there's no horror here, so therefore it's not a good film. I don't care. When I sit down, I just want to be entertained. Someone asked me in a, a previous video, like, what's your favorite genre of movie? And I said, I, I don't care about genres. All I want is to be entertained. I'll watch anything if it's entertaining. What was the other argument that I didn't like? Oh, the... <laughs> I said I was going to be more critical. What I, what I was trying to say is I'm going to point out things that I like and dislike more. Unfortunately, Hush just did a bunch of things that I hated, so there wasn't much to talk about that I liked, so I ended up just being, like, negative critical the whole time. I said I was gonna be critical, and then I was negative the whole time, so people are like, oh, so you're just gonna rip films from now on. No, that's not my intention at all. However, I do want to touch on the privileged man part, because that was an interesting conversational point. There was a comment, oh god, now I gotta try to find it. Oh, here's an interesting point. As someone who is both deaf and female, this movie is my worst nightmare. The movie isn't about horror or how interesting the killer is. It's about the fear that women have from living alone, especially women who are disabled. This is the only movie where I fully imagine myself in and absolutely scared shitless. Interesting point. I'll touch on it in a little bit. Uh, this is a comment from a male's perspective. I just watched this video with my girlfriend and we spent like an hour talking about why this movie is less scary for guys. You guys talk for an hour. My impact. <laughs> the key point in the movie that is supposed to make it scary is the fact that the killer is just a normal guy. He isn't some crazy assassin or super well-trained hunter. To me, that makes him immediately less scary because I'm thinking, well, if he's just a guy, I have a way better shot at beating him. To my girlfriend, that made him way scarier because that means any guy she sees in the streets is capable of doing this. I agree Dylan shit on this movie way too much and missed the point. Tyler. The fuck, bro? I thought you were- I thought we were boys. You don't got my back? You choose your girlfriend over me? I think the pivotal piece of the male versus female perspective is the fact that he is a normal guy. Less scary for men, more scary for women, which causes this large disagreement happening in the comments. I don't think that's the... Mm, to a degree. I, I want a, a large point, which is the only reason I'm making this video is so I can get to this large point that I want to make. So like going forward, people understand fully. And I think that's part of the discussion. I'm a guy, so maybe I didn't tap into that fear that women have. So it was less scary for me. The point that I want to make, and this is the most important point, so I'm going to try to say it as eloquently as possible. Let's try. You ever watch an idiot try to make a smart point? This might take a minute. <laughs> so imagine this is fiction and this is the real world. One thing I've noticed is that everyone watches films a little bit differently. Some people, these worlds are right next to each other. They may even overlap a little bit. So the people in the real world, they watch a film and they're super easily able to get into the, the fictional world and they can relate it to the real world. They pick up on the metaphors, the allegories, all of it. Then there's some people who are, it's a little bit more separated, but there's a nice little highway right between here. These are two cities. There's a nice little highway between the two cities so that if they think about it, they can pull all the things from the film and relate it to the real worlds. Now, how I watch films, these two things 
are completely separated. See, when I get into a fictional world, it exists only as fiction. Over here, I want chaos. I want murder, bloodshed, violence. But then when I'm finished in this fictional world, I pop back out over to the real world and I want peace and kindness and everyone to be respectful and nice. I watch films just to be entertained solely. I don't watch it to try to understand the metaphors and get the references. That's not that interesting to me and I just, that's not how I consume films and books and any type of entertainment. I don't need fiction to help me understand the real world. Like in the real world, I understand there is a problem with violence and men can be creepy and they can attack women and they can prey on women. It's a very real problem. But when I'm over here in this little world, none of these people exist. This deaf woman is a figment of someone's imagination that they put on paper and then they scripted out every action that she was ever gonna do. They shot the film and they released it for profit to entertain you and also to make money. If you were to show me a documentary about a woman who was being terrorized by a guy, I wouldn't make a single joke. I'd be like, holy shit, this is fucking frightening because that's real and this is fiction. And I don't, I don't confuse the two worlds. And that's why for me, if I call for murder in films, I do that a lot. That's because I don't care about the lives of fictional people. And I think that was a big issue for people was because they saw themselves in this character. So when I'm dismissing her situation, because it's just a fictional film, a lot of people are like, no, I could be in that situation. So if you're dismissing her, you're dismissing me. But I don't have that line. I draw that line really clearly. There's no connection between fiction and reality for me. And I noticed in a lot of the comments, they're saying like, oh, anyone could be that person. Or a lot of women could be that girl in the woods alone and it would be a horrifying situation to be in. And I would agree. If I was in that situation, I'd be horrified. But I'm not putting myself in that person's shoes because that person's not real. And I'm not suggesting people do the same thing as I do. Like if you like kind of really easily sliding into the shoes of the characters and empathizing with them and really getting into the world in that way, then that's what you should do. Now, the better a film is, if the story's on point, if the directing's on point, I get more invested, but I never get so invested that I can't see that it's not real. And that's the reason why uh, Paranormal Activity kind of fuck with me. Like I got really scared during that, that movie commentary because it was shot in a way that felt a little bit more real. Like Hush is shot in a very movie way, but if it's shot in a way that feels like a documentary, it just blurs that line a little bit. That's why I got so scared with Paranormal Activity. I guess since we're talking about it, we might as well talk about Jennifer's body as well because people are drawing a line. They're like, Heather's, Jennifer's body, and now Hush. These are female-led movies and Dylan doesn't have empathy for the people inside the films, which I think can kind of be explained by the fact that it's just all fiction to me. I remember one time I saw a comment, I think on the subreddit, where someone said, Dylan laughed at sexual assault. And I said, Dylan did what now? And someone else was like, wait, what are you talking about? And the person who posted was like, yeah, Jennifer's body. When the band kidnaps Megan Fox and they make jokes and then they stab her to death, Dylan laughed. And that scene was an allegory for sexual assault. And as soon as I read that, I, <laughs> I was a little bit blown away. I'm not gonna lie. It just kind of made me realize that there will be people that just kind of twist something to try to fit their narrative. It's a comedy film. One of my favorite comedy actors is delivering comedic lines and they're stabbing a fictional person so their fictional band will get fictional success. And I was like, yeah, this is funny. If a real life band made a video where they're like, hey, we're gonna sacrifice this girl, hopefully our band succeeds, and they did some jokes, I wouldn't laugh at the jokes because that's real stakes. Films aren't real stakes for me. They're, they're vegan. Films are... <laughs> so a lot of people saying, like, Dylan, you missed the point of the movie. I, I'm telling you I'm never gonna ever get the point of movies because I'm not looking for the points. I'm looking for entertainment. That's why I watch movies. I don't watch them to pull messages from. I already know how I feel about issues. I don't need a movie to show me that men can be dangerous and scary. I know that. We should do something about that. Oh wait, let's talk about, since we're here, let's talk about, what about him joking that she should strip naked and flash the man intent on psychologically torturing her and then killing her? If someone is hunting you and you think, what if I got completely naked and ran at him to stun him, surprise him? That would probably be the absolute stupidest idea you could come up with. It is so absurdly stupid that no one would ever consider it. I don't mind explaining jokes, but no one's gonna find it funny now. Like no one's gonna be like, oh, now I get it and think it's funny. But if you're in that situation, that's the stupidest thing you could do. Suggesting to do something so absurdly stupid is funny to me. No, you sh no real person should actually do that. And I think that just comes from people, again, they're just like kind of crossing the lines between fiction and reality. People should understand, like I'm joking about like 90% of the things I say. 
For example, just jump outside of the window, hand-to-hand -hand combat, hammer high, knife low. Just take the crossbow, throw it to the other side, stab an arrow in his eye. The joke is making it seem like it's super easy. Like, oh, I, I could do that. It's like I'm built different. I could handle that situation. But in reality, I'd probably be pissing myself locked away in a bathroom. That's the joke. And I, now that I explained the joke out loud, I hate that I explained it out loud. But I will promise you this. I'm going to continue. When I watch films in the future, I'm going to come up with really stupid plans. If it sounds stupid, then I'm saying it probably because it is stupid. That's where the funny is. If I was trying to come up with real plans, it wouldn't be a comedy video. It would just be a video about me trying to survive in a fictional character's shoes, which is not the kind of video that I want to make. I'm going to say outlandish things. I'm never going to take anything too seriously, including things with serious topics involved. Like this, home invasions, horrible things that happen. Violence against women, violence against anybody. Those are horrible things that happen. But in a fictional situations, I'm gonna be calling for murder. Why do I do that? Because it just, it makes it more fun of an experience for me. People seem to enjoy it. This channel's doing well. And again, I'm not suggesting that you watch movies in the same kind of detached way with always understanding it's fiction that I watch it in. I bet it's awesome to get that involved in this world. That makes you care more. That's just not how I watch it. And that's probably never gonna be how I ever watch films. Anything else I need to address? Let's just go to the video, top comments, and see if I haven't addressed anything. Here, I, even like a moose. Did you find a moose? Mooses are like thousands of pounds. That wasn't the, that wasn't a joke. You get a moose in your house, you think you're gonna survive? You're gonna be a rug. That moose is gonna stomp you with its moose weight. And I think that's really where we went off course. We're talking about like, oh, is Dylan taking this film seriously enough? The real questions we should be asking, is the world taking mooses seriously enough? <laughs> ah, Dylan, quit joking around, be serious. Time bucks, Dylan got too stuck on this being a horror film. Time bucks, who are you? No, I did not get too stuck on a horror. I don't care what the film is. Again, romantic comedy. Could have been a slow burn drama. I don't care. Just do it well, whatever it is you're doing, and I'm gonna enjoy it. That's all there is to it. The movie represents every woman's fear. This is our everyday reality. Violence against women is the real horror. Yeah, and I, I think I can understand why people like the film more now because they were more easily able to just slip into that mindset. And I agree with you there. I think. I really think the film could have done a better job helping everyone else get to that point as well if they weren't in that mindset. All of your strategies to fight them off would probably work for you. Well, obviously it would work for me because I, I just, I have that strategic mind. I'm built different. It's not supposed to be like a typical home invasion horror movie. And I think that needs to be considered when giving a review. If you come to me for a serious review, you are making a mistake immediately. If you're ever thinking about saying like, hey Dylan, take films more seriously or you're missing the point of the movie, just understand this that's not what this is all about. Yes, the movie could have been scarier and introduced more tension, but the thing is, for women, this is already extremely terrifying. Fair point. Is there like a point where it's too terrifying? Like if they did more things that were more terrifying on top of already the original premise? I don't know where I saw it, but someone made the point that it's like, if the film just expects you to like jump into the character's head and that's where all the terror stems from, then it's not doing a good job because it's the film's job to engross you. That's why I think playing with the deafness would have helped me understand the character better, which would have gotten me more into the film. But since it never did that, I never really cared. And when I don't care, I'm just gonna joke around because none of it's actually real. I wish YouTube wouldn't do the comments like this. I wish they would just show the absolute top comments because it's not just showing like the top comments of the last certain time period, if that makes sense. They're introducing the thing called writer brain. Any good movie would make sure the dialogue matters and comes back around at some point. The movie brings it back in a cool, shocking, creative way. Oh, I don't think it was cool, shocking, or creative. Dylan, I bet she incapacitates the killer with super loud sounds. Next moment, the neighbor comments how insanely loud her smoke alarm is. You can't, that's just telling, show me incapacitate me, make it insanely loud. I bet her ability to see multiple endings uh, will play a role in the end. I literally called the film, the first establishing shot, before that first shot was finished, I had called the ending of this film. So yeah, I do wish that they would have done something a little bit more creative and thrown me off a little bit. I really think you were too hung up on this being a horror, oh, fuck it, hell, it's a thriller. I hate how people are talking about horror and thriller as if they were opposite ends of the spectrum. As if horror films and thrillers aren't often lumped together. And no, they're not the same thing, but they share a lot of similarities. And also expectations mean nothing to me. We've been over that. As soon as Dylan mentioned that he's way more afraid of the moose than he is just a guy, I knew the tone for the rest of the critique. This one violently missed the mark. I missed the mark so bad that violence occurred. <laughs> I think the video's funny. Are you kidding me? A good old moose joke? How often do you hear moose jokes? By the way, she's not a real woman, so it's okay. Oh, but real women like that exist. True, and if they're being attacked, I'm not gonna talk about moose, unless they were 
attacked by a moose. So let me get this straight. Dylan's idea of being a woman, like if he were in her stead, one of the things he'd do is get naked in front of a murdering predator because that would throw him off. I mean, if you think about it, there's a chance it works. I bet these comments are just going to be like, oh, I'm not looking forward to seeing these nine. Very tone deaf. Okay. You do, you do realize I'm not suggesting real people do that though. The humor is in the absurdity of that. That was so inappropriate and he kept making that joke over and over. I'll make it again. Jokes that make people uncomfortable. I guess let's leave off on this final point. The Jennifer's body thing because we touched on it a little bit before. Some people don't like when I make uh, girl girl kissing jokes. Like being into it. That's a joke I've stopped making because people are said, ah, oh, it makes me a little bit uncomfortable, which is fair. I'm not too attached to the joke, but the joke is movie studios are like, oh, we're gonna get that dumb male demographic. Guys might not be liking the film, but they see two girls kissing, they're just gonna be like, oh, I love this film. So the idea behind the joke is to be super into it, just as the movie studios would want. Like, I'm just that dumb guy that's like, oh, yeah. And it's one of those jokes. I have several jokes that just kind of go over time. If I had continued that joke every time, I saw it, I would have gotten bigger and bigger with my reaction until the point where it's so absurdly over the top that you're like, okay, settle down. However, people said it was a little bit uncomfortable for them, which I understand where they're coming from. And also I didn't want them to think like I saw their comments and then just continue to make the joke and get bigger with my reactions just specifically be to like spite them to be like, oh, I saw your criticism and I'm gonna go bigger with it, which would have made them feel bad and I wouldn't want that. So I just kind of dropped the joke and it's whatever. I'm not that into two girls kissing. And also again, fiction reality. If I'm in the real world and I see two girls kissing, what's my reaction? That's their business. That's not, that's none of my business. Anybody kissing in public, I don't care. If I see a fight happening, I'm not like, oh yeah, murder each other. <laughs> there's a distinction between fiction and reality and there's no carryover where the things I want to happen in fictional worlds should happen in reality. Anyways, this video was f uh, far too serious for my liking. I don't like making serious videos because they're not, they're not fun. All I want to do is make jokes and laugh. I don't want to address things that are serious. I don't think I did anything wrong. I'm going to be honest. I think I like the film less because I'm a guy though. This film is more innately scary to women. I think that's a great point that people made. But anyways, thanks for watching. If you've, if you've got this far, it is also important to note that the film is largely likes. I think it's what, like 93 to 94% were just likes. So I know not everyone had a problem with it. There were a lot of people saying like, this is just what Dylan does. He makes dark jokes. He doesn't take anything seriously. But yeah, I just wanted to make this video so that anytime in the future, people are like, oh, Dylan, you didn't take this serious enough or you missed the point. I'll be like, here's a video for you. <laughs> Come watch this Ooga Booga video. All right, love you guys. Ooga Booga!